Good evening, administration, <laughs> audience, and the rest of council. We have a couple of our council members not going to be present tonight. Mr. Grimm and Mr. Lindsay are both in the hospital. And later on, we'll get to where we'll, we'll excuse them. So I guess with that, Mrs. Burner, we'll have a call, roll call. Mayor Cook. Yep. Grimm is absent. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. <laughs> Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay's out. And Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Five members present. And I guess tonight I'll do the invocation. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, please guide us tonight as we attempt to do the business for the good citizens of this city. Please bless our first responders, our EMTs, firefighters, and all of our troops across the way. In God's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I need action, uh, motion for action on the one, or January 16th meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. <clears throat> this new seating, this has just got me all. The second was Shammy. Yes. So Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chami? Yes. Those minutes are accepted, 5-0. Next item on the agenda is the appointment of the city manager as the acting clerk of council. Anything from any of our members? If not, I need a motion. Um, I do have a question. Go ahead. At, at some later time, we can find someone else that would like the position. Is it feasible for us to appoint them and let Randy not have to do it? My personal opinion is yes, that we could do that. Uh, anybody else got any thoughts? Unless Mr. Bridge has any objection to that. May I? Go ahead. So upon thinking about it a little bit further, yeah, it's just not something that's really productive for me to do at a busy meeting. Um, when me and Ms. We, had dis we discussed the pay scale. Um, we had agreed upon it. $400 is what our salary is. $100 for each set. $100 for the meeting and $100 for the minutes. On, on the surface, that would work. But when we were talking about it, she gave me a call said, it's not going to work. OK, explain. Well special meetings, work sessions. So we look at that 400, almost like a salary for the, this, for the clerk of council. So then it goes into, well, how do you pay someone for showing up for a special meeting? Then it got to be super complicated. Then I realized I'm gonna put someone else on the payroll and I don't wanna do that. So I think it's moving forward, not the best idea situation. If it's a busy meeting, just ask for maybe understanding on council if I go a little bit at a slower pace, um, which I think is acceptable. Um, but there are benefits to having me there too. One came up last week when um, I had to run down to the Park Lane Elementary to have Ms. Burner sign something because I was not acting clerk. So there are some benefits to having me there as well. So I don't want to focus on the cons because there are some pros as well. So as long as it's, you know, at a busy meeting, I just have some understanding that it's not going to go as fast paced as it should. I think it's the best situation for the city just to have me do it. Playing devil. Thank you, Vice Devil's Mayor. Advocate. What happens if both of you are absent at the same time or tied up? I don't think that's ever happened, has it? It's never happened, but it'd be no, it, 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 
can't say it won't ever happen or will never happen, um, but hopefully at that point in time I'll have an executive assistant sat and then that person could show up on my behalf. That would, would, would be my next sure. suggestion. So. Mm -hmm. so I guess, do I have an, a motion? So moved. Second. Ms. Eggleston and who's the second? Mr. Jammy. Okay. Councilwoman Ray? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Jammy? Yes. And that is accepted 5 0. <clears throat> and I guess, Mr. Bridge, it's up to you as the city manager to report. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public, members of public at home. Um, city manager reports dated February 5th, 2024. Um, under department reports, um, all the department reports, with the exception of the planning and zoning and mayor's court report, is attached. Uh, the planning and zoning in court mayor's court, court report normally it's on a two-week interval uh, since it was omitted from the last meeting we actually gave you the past month so at the next meeting we'll start the two-week interval as well so let's take a minute take a look at that i do got quite a few bullet points so i kind of get through them as quick as i can usually on these months where it's not a busy meeting i kind of get caught up on this kind of stuff so under discussion topics we have pete bales he is a local government uh, expert. He's got over 25 years of experience. Um, he is from local government consultants. I've hired him a few times to do odds and end project for the city right now. He's doing a record, record retention project for us. Uh, but I discussed with him, uh, councils need to want to have the retreat. So I do have him coming at the, um, to pay us a visit at the next council meeting on the 20th. He's gonna come, he's gonna pick council's brain about what you guys think the retreat should be, what you wanna, want out of it. I know we've had that discussion as well. But it's also going to be good to have that discussion directly with Mr. Bales, because um, he, like I said, has the experience to put these on. And from that, he'll gauge how he's going to set it all up. But it's very important for council to come with ideas about how you want this to be. You don't have to follow any kind of uh, template. You can make it your own, but you want to get out of it more understanding of our former government, more understanding of our roles and responsibilities for each other. He's also going to talk to me as the administrator, too, because the administration is involved in this as well. Uh, but it's just, it's just a great local talent. I'm excited for them to come visit you guys. But again, on the next meeting, just come prepared for what you want your retreat to be. Administration at city council meetings, this will also be effective at the next meeting. I'm not going to have Ms. Harris come to the second meeting of the month. It's a long day for her. Um, I will still, we'll still be supplying the full finance report. When we have big meetings for something we're going to finance, of course, she'll show up for that. But it's just the daily uh, month meetings. I'm going to just give her a report for her. She gets in rather early. By the time she gets done, it's a very, very long day for her. Her staff does get here at 7 a.m. So, um, and again, for her to just come here, sit, set all that time and give a very small, um, but yet important report, it just takes a lot out of it. So I'll be moving forward with her reports. But again, if we have anything coming big up as far as financing, of course, clearly she would be appropriately here. Um, 2024 fireworks display, excited about this one. On this year's budget, council increased that a little bit this year. I think I have 22,000 for the fireworks show itself. Um, I don't need council authority to sp spend that, um, but I do want to come and just discuss it with you guys. Last year we did a $17,000 show. Some of the feedback we've been getting for the past few years is the show is fantastic, um, but we are, the fans are wanting a little bit more of a spectacular show as far as maybe some more high flying shells opposed to the low laying shells. Especially for our visitors at the pool, it kind of gets hard for them to see anything kind of low. So I do want to beef it up a little bit this year. I think we're going to sign the contract for around 21 or 20. I can't remember off the top of my head. But we're going to focus not so much on making the show longer, but same amount of time, just with more bells and whistles. What is council's opinion on that? Did uh, uh, Roberto or uh, Mike seem to indicate how much, let's see, what the time frame on that show would be. It's still about the same as it normally is. We're not making it any longer or shorter. It's, it's going to have more higher shells in it than before. So it should be the same length because the length is almost perfect. You want to keep that, I think it's about 20, 21 minutes, 19 minutes. You want to keep that. Um, again, we're just going to focus on, a, on the and shells that go up higher. That and while we're on that. Mm -hmm with that housing project coming in, where are we uh, for future years? 
So I have a text message from them. I'm going to meet up with, I cannot remember the guy, Mike Elsner is his name, I do believe. Mike Elsner. Yep, I'm going to meet with him. He shot me a text last week. I did talk to Roberto about those developments. For this year, I think we're good. We're going to look at the phasing schedule and take it from there. But year after this, we're more than likely going to have to find a new place to shoot from, depending on where they're at in their phases. Um, with this particular location, though, given that they're doing phase one, it's going to connect on the Brubaker Drive. I'm going to probably go ahead and guesstimate next year we're going to have to find a different location to shoot from. OK, Did, have we decided on a date? It's the, always the weekend before the 4th. I think 29th. this one's the 29th. is a Saturday with a rainout date on the Sunday. OK, I have talked with Tommy's Double Barrel Barbecue. I think he's mm. been up there in the past and gave him a tentative date of the 29th. Um, and I think we probably need to contact a couple other food trucks um, along with Mr. Rudewald is to see uh, what we need to do as far as their concessions. Statement. Yeah, and we got some time. I just want to, we definitely want to get that contract signed and executed. So we get a really good deal. We get a really good bang for a buck by having it when we do opposed to having it more around the fourth. Um, I think number one, uh, we've got, how do I say this? A group with American Fireworks quite a bit better than we had with the first group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he seems to be a little bit more, what do I want to say, knowledgeable and uh, amicable mm -hmm. to our needs. Yeah. Well, Council 2 at the budget work session, I think there was a general consistency around that Council 2 just to beef it up just a little bit, which is why you guys gave a little bit extra line item money to do so. So I think it's a great show. And we, we got a lot of compliments on it, but there's always a little bit room for improvement. I don't think it's too drastic, to be honest with you. It's just, it's just a great, it's a great event for the city. I think last year was outstanding. Yeah. <coughs> It kind of slows in the middle, paces a little bit, just because of the, we're trying to get the most bang for the buck. Right. That, but we're going to alleviate little, that this year. Adding a little bit more is going to be outstanding. Yeah. Even, even more. So. Yeah. Anything else on fireworks? Okay. No. Okay. Moving on. Financial disclosure form. I emailed council on that. Just please just make sure you have all that done prior to the dines. If the new council members, you need any help with that, let me know. I can get you set up with the phone number too. Uh, talk about that pr uh, private on a private matter, uh, but it is required. And even if you're not sitting this year, you sat last year, you are still required to um, fill to submit. Um, next intergovernmental, intergovernmental meeting is a, a September 30th. I know it's quite a ways out, and of course I'll give council some more reminders. But since I just found the information, I wanted to share it. So September 30th at Tecumseh High School, um, food starts at six. Meeting starts at 6:30. We had a very good meeting. Uh with the group over at Bethel uh, the other night. Uh, I'd like to thank all the council that did show up. Um, well, Mr. Grimm and Mr. Lindsay were the only two, and Chief Trustee did also show up. I thought we had a real good representation, and I thought we had some good ideas. Thank you. Um, Executive assistant to the city manager job posting. So years coming, finally got it posted. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, got around 30 applicants. I haven't went through really? them yet. Yeah, deadline is a first review is on the 13th. So I'm gonna wait until then to kind of really go through them all, but we are getting some traction on it. It's much needed. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, the reason I put it on there, just to mention it out, just to PR it a little bit, but if any of you know family members or friends, that'd be a good, out, good uh, match for that. Please just tell them to look at the Facebook page or the city website page or Indeed, and it's, it's located on there. Dillinger Hall rentals, they start tomorrow, February 6th. And how we handled this is was, um, I didn't put it on Facebook yet because I didn't want the whole entire region to see it. I kind of wanted our citizens kind of the best get this first grab at it. So we just promoted it through the utility newsletters. Well, he put that on the website, which was expected. Um, but I don't think a lot of people click on that. So what we see now is our own residents renting it. It is starting to take off. Um, we are renting it. No one is complaining about the price when they actually call and do it. We heard some Facebook chatter people were upset, but when they actually call and rent it, it's not even a question. So that's, that's good. 
So we are glad to see that's taken off. Um, so I wanted to say that one because I, tomorrow, well, tomorrow at some point in time, it will be posted on Facebook, promote it. Um, so people from outside the city limits will probably end up knowing about it at that point in time. So we're expecting it to take up a little bit. Um, just so everyone knows, the parking lot is going to be paved. We do have, I did some, have some issues with the ADA, how it was set up when I went to looked at it last week. So I talked to Howie, how he immediately got everything corrected. Um, so right now it's not the best. It is legal for ADA compliance. But as we go and pave it, it's gonna be a lot better done. So I did have him put a ramp in there Friday at the last minute. So we have a little ramp going from the gravel up to the actual end of the thing. And when it's paved, it's all gonna be flush. You know, and right now the parking, the handicap parking, if you come out the side, you actually exit onto our porch. Once we get it paved, it's gonna be a normal straight off to the side. So if you, if anyone does rent it, you have some ADA issues like that, just let us know. We do have everything signed off from the county and we are gonna improve it when we do the final uh, paving in spring. Um, if you haven't been inside yet, go take a look at it. It's, it's a great facility. <laughs> City Council training seminar, I have that attached here. Um, I also sent out some information directly to Mr. Shammy and Mrs. Wright regarding it. Um, it is highly, it is underlined newly elected. Um, the reason I didn't call the rest of the council members is I wanted to get that clarified. So any council member can go. If you want to go to this, just let me know. We also have an additional training that you can go to as well. I'm going to get some information emailed out about that. It's a multi-day training. It has a lot more um, diversity in the class offerings. Mm. So this is the one we sent Mr. Lindsay to a few years ago. He seemed to enjoy it. Um, so I'll send that out to all of council when we get the information. Um, but again, we have a budget for training, so I highly, uh, highly recommend you guys take advantage of that. Uh, next is Text My Gov. We're very excited about this. This launches tomorrow. You'll see the widget on our Facebook page. This has been coming now for a couple months. Brian has been working on to get it set it up. So basically, it is another way, a form of communicating with our citizens. So basically, Text My Gov, text my gov is, um, let's just say, Ms. Eagleston, you go and download the app on your phone. You can text keywords to the city and it'll get responses. You know, so Pothole is going to tell you who to call. Um, or how to submit it online, you know? Um, or, hey, we need to send out notification. Hey, uh, we're flushing fire hydrants. Another form of communication directly to the actual citizens. So one, it's relied on people signing up to do that. That's why we promote it. Um, it's a very relatively cheap service for what we're getting out of it, so we're excited about that. But these kind of texting mobile things are the way governments are going uh, to meet to a, a, as an additional way to communicate with their uh, citizens. So we're excited to start that. Please look at our Facebook page, I mean our website page tomorrow, we'll have some information on that. Share it on your own Facebook page, share it on your local community pages, sign up for it. Um, we got the keyword list, Brian just got that done, so it's going to pack full of information. Um, so we're excited to launch that tomorrow too, and again, just another way to communicate with our citizens. Okay. Right. I got a question if I can. Mm -hmm. that. Uh, so we have a pretty large Hispanic community around here. Is that, can they switch that to Spanish? That you know what, I don't that? know the answer to that, but that's a very good question and I'll ask Brian and I'll email counsel out tomorrow. Okay. I want to say yes, but do not quote me on that. Can I ask a question, sir? Go ahead. I just want to make sure I understood you, so I... I'm sorry, sir, sir. Can you go to the podium and state your name and address? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I had to. I go away for that process. I'm very I'm serious. Five, eight, eight, six, eight, five, <clears> so, as a citizen, if I download the app, I want to you know, uh, drive a permit. I type in those words and then it gives me the resources of what I need to do? Yes. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Thank yep. you. I just didn't quite understand. No, thank you for clarifying it. We good? All right, moving on to the city manager report. General fund ending balance history. So um, we don't have the, I don't have the final numbers out across the all funds to council yet. I'm working on that. But we are very happy to say that the 2023 general fund ended with 2.8 million, nearly 2.9, $2,894,895. Um, so I wanted to just council to look at this history. In 2014, we have $52,442 ending. Um, I was hired in 2015, 169,320 is what we actually ended with. We were projected it with 8,000. So what we see here is a history of man money that has been managed well through administration and council. But really, we need to thank the citizens for passing the income tax increase because that's where we see these um, these fund balances come really come into play. So again, thank you to the citizens. But this has just been a long 
a long time, but we're actually financially starting to turn the corner as well. So again, citizens, thank you. Council, thank you. And administration, um, thank you as well. Um, upcoming legislation, ordinance to accept codification update. I just got that in the mail last week. And then the incentive pay policy, which I have drafted, we'll go into executive session to kind of look at that tonight. Make sure council's on the same page before we put it up for a vote. Ongoing council project, swimming pool. Uh, we're gonna be having, uh, I wanna say a work session. We'll probably just have this next month, month and a half, there's a section of a meeting where we sit down and talk about really what council desires. Because you know, right now we just got vague, give us this. Well, we need more details as far as you guys want a deep end? Do you want a diving board? Do you want slides? Do you want this instead of that? Because that's really going to hone in a more accurate quote. Um, mayor's court, um, that's still ongoing. Uh, council chambers ongoing and the incentive pay policy, which would be alleviated after uh, tonight. Um, so that's all I have. And I do not have any additional discussion topics. Go ahead, Danielle. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I wondered what the difference is between an uh, executive assistant and, I don't forget what, how he's called now, but the, so he's not going to do that anymore? Be your, I, I, lo I lose my words right now. I know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm concerned. So what, what, is, what is Howie, isn't he? Howie's the Director of Public Service Assistant City Manager. Assistant, that's what I wanted, Assistant City Manager. Mm -hmm. So are we gonna have an Assistant City Manager and an Executive Assistant? I don't know. Yeah, they're two completely different positions. Oh, so what do they do? The Executive Assistant to the City Manager, mm -hmm. basically a secretary. Answering phone, writing letters, checking emails, you know, doing odds and ends that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. I had that. read that online, like, but I didn't know what the difference was. Yeah, like drafting a newsletter, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You want to apply? Go. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Anybody else, uh, council, got anything else? Yes, no. Well, are we done? We're not, you're not saying we're done, are you? <laughs> no, I didn't know whether you had any additional topics. On what he was talking about, right? All righty. I don't think there's any committee report. Mm -hmm. And the comments from members of the public, I believe both the public have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess, Mrs. Berner, we go to resolution. Okay, dokie. We have our first resolution, resolution 2024-01R. This was introduced on January 16th. Public hearing in action tonight. A resolution adopting the New Carlisle City Council Rules of Council. So moved. Second. You got it for a motion and a second? Yep, I've got those. Any discussion or explanation? Oh, um, I'm sorry, I'm looking ahead at the next resolution. Uh, explanation of this resolution. This is a yearly housekeeping resolution. Council um, adopts their rules of how to operate. Okay, good. All right, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 5 0. Moving on to our next one, Resolution 2024 03R. Introduction Public Hearing and Action Tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Commerce Division of State Fire Marshal for the purpose of accepting a 2024 Marks grant. So moved. Second. 
Um, an explanation of this ordinance, uh, we were awarded a, uh, a grant from the Power Department of Commerce to purchase some Mark's radios. Uh, so we need a resolution to accept those funds. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. For me. That's the move on. This is our three. I know I did not. I, the recording of that oh, piece was. I did it after the fact. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry to throw you off. You're all right. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. And that passes 5-0. Moving on to our ordinances. We have Ordinance 2024-01. This was introduced on January 16th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the sale by internet auction of city-owned personal property which is not needed for public use or is obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired. Motion. So moved. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. This is a housekeeping ordinance for us to get rid of some unneeded vehicles. There are one, two, three, four, five of these vehicles on the exhibit A. And it looks like they're all from the utility department, except for one, which was an old police department cruiser. Any further discussion? Go I have ahead. a question about this. Um, is that link on our website? I don't know. So other people can look at it and see what the city has for sale? It links to gov deals. I'll have to see if Scott's linked it on the website or not. I just thought it might be nice if our citizens knew what vehicles and stuff we had up. They might be interested in. I want to say it's mentioned in there. We got to publicly post it, well, actually, mm -hmm. in the legislation itself. So it's probably somewhere, but I'll see if it's a direct link on our website. It's a good, good comment. Anything further? Ms. Murray. All right. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 5 0. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to Ordinance 2024 02. This was also introduced on January 16th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing city-owned personal property, which is not needed for public use or is obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired, and that has no value to be discarded or salvaged. So moved. Second. Okay, an explanation of this ordinance, this piggybacks off the one we just passed, and should it not sell on gov deals, gives the city the authority to discard or salvage. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 5-0. Moving on to Ordinance 2024-03. This was introduced on January 16th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance establishing compensation for the Director of Public Service Assistant City Manager. So moved. Sorry. An explanation of this ordinance, uh, any time that uh, we raise the rate uh, wages of the director of public service, finance director or myself, it has to be approved by council. Anyone else does not need to be. And that's what's in front of uh, council tonight. Any discussion? Okay. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shannon? Yes. That passes 5 0. Three. Okay. okay. Uh, moving on to Ordinance 2024 04, introduced on January 16th. Public hearing in action tonight. 
an ordinance establishing compensation for the finance director. So moved. Second. An explanation of this ordinance, uh, we're uh, establishing a, a, a rate increase for our finance director, which needs to be approved by ordinance. Any further? Good. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 5-0. Ordinance 2024-05 introduced on January 16th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance establishing compensation for the city manager of the city of New Carlisle. So moved. Second. Thanks for mentioning this ordinance. They are uh, uh, setting the compensation rate of me, the city manager, um, a 3% increase, um, and that is, uh, needs to be approved by ordinance. Any discussion? Mr. Brown. I just have one comment on this that <clears throat> I, I agree we need to approve this, but the wording of it concerns me a little bit because it almost sounds like we went through a official review with Mr. Bridge and we have not yet. Um, and so I would just, I guess, I don't know, for the record or whatever, I think we need to seriously talk and figure out a time to do an official job performance review for him uh, before doing another one of these. Let me ask this, and this is off the wall. Would you think that before we entertain a salary increase for any one of the three that we sit down in a work session, let's say the next time, and do as you recommend? So, in other I words, think, I think, I think uh, you know, feedback for employees is always good uh, to have that uh, time set aside to do that. The one thing about it is, you know, the assistant city manager and the finance director do report directly to Mr. Bridge. So it's, in my opinion, it's probably more appropriate for him to set that time and then for us to set a time with Mr. Bridge because he directly reports to us. Um, now, if he wanted to have us be involved in the reviews with Howie and uh, Mrs. Harris, I think that's great. I mean, I think they probably wouldn't have an issue with that either. But um, I think in being fair to Mr. Bridge and fair to the citizens and us too, I think we need to come up with something um, to be able to fairly and accurately evaluate Mr. Bridge's performance. I guess I, I can understand where you're coming from and, and the credence of what you're asking for is a possibility. I guess I'm sitting here thinking, okay, we're at the 24th hour on this. Mm -hmm. Do we in turn pass this and set ourselves up to come up with some constructive measure for the next one? I, th I think to be fair, we probably should. We talked about this and, um, you know, I think in light of, in my opinion, in light of inflation in light of uh, you know, things going up and everything, I think 3% is a, uh, a fair increase. Um, but I'm just not accustomed to giving raises without reviews. Without some backup. Yeah. And, and so, um, like I said, I'm, I'm in favor of this. I just think we as council, we need to really nail down a procedure and, and time. So. Any other discussion? No, I think that's a totally appropriate idea. Not for right now, because this is settled. But for next time, sure, it makes sense. Because it's not all about negative, it's positive too, so. Go ahead. 
me and Mr. Bond had a good conversation a few months ago on this particular matter. So thank you for bringing it up. I want to be reviewed. It is hard to do the job without knowing where you're standing. Um, I also am a firm believer in, it's a, I don't want to say pyramid, but if you give Howie and Colleen a raise, it's pretty indicative of the performance I'm doing too. Um, as far as bringing into the rooms, all due respect, I think that we need to focus on our form of government. And Mr. Bond hit it right on the head. Colleen and Howie do report to me. I would be more than willing to share my evaluations I do with you with council, but to have council evaluate them just strictly goes against our form of government. Unfortunately, though, the upside of that is you guys have to approve their raises by charter. You know, so again, I will gladly share the review process with you and I'll show you the results. Um, but for me, one of the things we need to get down is a template to, to, to review my, and it's, it's tough. We've done it before, it is just tough to review a city manager. Um, and that's, that's council something to get to maybe a committee together and you guys see how other cities do it. But it's very important that you do it because if you don't recall, and my contract is if I don't get reviewed in the calendar year, and I put this in, because I don't like not being reviewed, I get an 8% raise automatically. So I'm for the development of that review. It's just something council's gonna have to come together as a group and saying, all right, what standards are you gonna do? What are these measuring marks? And then two, really, we need to get together at the beginning of the year, because it's kind of truth. We mutually, and I use the word mutually, agree upon goals for the com upcoming year. So I think well, now we have the contract in place, it's gonna be a learning curve for everyone involved, it's new for everyone, but I think we're missing an opportunity because it is almost a disservice to the citizens. It's a disservice to anyone. I think on the surface, I've been here long enough, we know I do a relatively fantastic job because the city's in a much better place, mm -hmm. but you still need to have some backup. So thank you, Mr. Bond, for bringing it up. But yes, I want my raise now because it's not my fault. Y'all didn't do anything, so that's on you. <laughs> and it's not a lot of money. It's I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm going back to a previous review that was done. And consequently, I believe there was a lot of misunderstandings upon that review because I believe Mr. Cobb and I caught a lot of flack over that review, but I thought we judged it fairly. Uh, and being a devil's advocate and a cheap fellow that doesn't like to see us spend any more money than we've got to. But I also understand the fact that if we don't pay our personnel properly, then they're going to go elsewhere. So I guess my recommendation would be that about the time that we do the budget, then we possibly do a review and possibly tie it in with the budget because at that point you're going to a lot X amount of money for uh, the raises, city managers, finance director and the assistant city manager. So I think that's where we need to put that review into place. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I don't know whether anybody else has got any feedback, but uh, we do what? A, a normal ballpark 3% every year? I would usually look at a cost of living increase if there's no beef behind it. I just thought of this. You, we have an opportunity next Tuesday. You guys got Mr. Bales here to talk about your retreat. It's a good opportunity, too, to pick his brain about how other city managers get evaluated. So it's an opportunity that Mr. Bales is here. Maybe he comes back and he has a special work session where well, you guys can't do anything. Well, you might be able to do this in executive session. I don't know. But he's going to have a wealth of knowledge how to honestly and effectively uh, review such a unique position as the city manager, where we wear all these different hats and we're everywhere. You know, and we got a lot on our plate. So I think he would be a great resource for you guys to at least get the ball rolling with that review. Any further discussion? So go ahead. I was curious if he is coming of his own goodwill, if we're paying him to come to talk to us. This is his own goodwill. This is his mm -hmm. own goodwill, okay. 
Yeah, because I have some ideas, and that I just added that one to for retreat. Yeah. I think that is the best time to do that is through our retreat. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can plan a retreat next year to where that all interties with that too. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than that. Yep. Possibility. Yep. Good times. Any further? Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Passes five zero. And I believe that is. Any other additional city businesses? I guess the city offices are closed Monday, February 19th for President's Day. And uh, I guess we're open for discussion on city related business. Mr. Mayor, um, I think that um, we've done, as, as we've done in the past for past mayors, we've given them the key to the city, and we need to do that with Mr. Lowry. How about a lead boat anchor? Mm -hmm. oh, that would work too. But I have no problem with that. Is anybody else? No problem. What's it unlock? <laughs> You want my key? And then then I would assume Mr. Bridge will <laughs> lay that in your lap. Shh. I'm trying to get raised this mic. Jesus. That's kidding. So that's a go for the key? Yes. Can I have a motion on that? So moved. Second. You want to do it next meeting? Let's do it now so I can get it done by the next meeting. <laughs> Who was the first? You? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you guys are keeping it easy for me tonight. You know? I'm trying to make it easy for you. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Has do you have a specific type of wood you like more than other? Uh, Vice Mayor Anderson. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. That passes 5-0, and that is to give Mike Lowry the key to the city. Correct? Um, go ahead, Mr. Uh, I'd just like to move that we excuse Mr. Uh, yeah, I agree. Do you want to do those individually? I think you can do them both Just together. Both yeah. together? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Grimm and, and okay. Mr. Uh, Lindsay. Second. We've got a motion from Mr. Bond. Do I have a second? Who? Okay. okay, we'll go Peggy. Let's go. Okay. All right. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Motion to excuse Grimm and Lindsay, accepted 5 0. Anything else from before it comes? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask about the water. Um, there's been a lot of problems. It's one of my big concerns. It's one of the reasons I wanted to set up here the water bill for the people. And I know a lot of times, like we had the lady not so long ago that had the big leak, and there's an issue with that. But I have some ideas that I think will help. And I would like to really sit down and discuss how we can change that and make new rules or new things. And I'm not sure how to go about it. So that's what I'm bringing. Do you want to do this in a work session? I'm, um, I'm thinking this may get a little involved. I don't know. Well, it is, yeah, because it, it, it'll take some time. I don't think we can do it. Mm -hmm. We can do it to our regular session. This is going to take it longer. So either we meet at 5:30 and start it, or we start it at six. We started at six. We're here a little bit later. We started at 5:30. We got a little bit sooner. Um, or you have a separate meeting on its own on a non-council Monday. But this, I mean, here's the thing. It's it's going to take some. It's going. It's it's not a meeting you get done in like 10 minutes. To be honest with you. Well, let me interject one thing here. Sure. I did. I paid my water bill this time. It was double what I normally pay. I didn't question a thing. The reason why, the boss wrote the check. I didn't see it. But anyway, I had the young lady from the water department call me and tell me that I definitely had a small leak. So I've done some looking around. I've got the plumber coming. So consequently, we're going to stop that. But I think her attitude was great. She just informed me and told me that, hey, you've got a leak that's one or two, I'm sorry, four or five gallon per minute, per hour, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And that's what's causing your overage. So I, 
will pass along to the water department that somebody did a good job up there in notifying me, which I was not knowledgeable yeah. about. It. Go ahead. On the uh, same lines Mr. Cook said, um, I've been very impressed with Sarah in the water department. Sarah's great. Um, she knows that my brother's out of the country until the end of, the month, uh, end of March, and she called me to let me know that he had a major leak and he had a water line burst and he was going, he went through 24,000 gallons of water in two days. But had she not called me, I mean, yeah, he'd still be spurting water all over the place. Yeah. In other but, words, we'd have a skating rink on Main Street. <laughs> yeah. And she has been very helpful through the whole ordeal. And mm -hmm. I just, she needs to be recognized for her. She's great, and uh, she's a new hire. I do believe she's still actually on her six-month probationary period. So, I uh, we, uh, we knew she'd be a good fit when we were, when they were interviewer. Um, so she's already proven herself many times over with her customer service skills. Um, may I go on a little bit further? Yes, please. Um, so we have the issues with the water bills. So I said once we come, finance department gets done closing out the year, that's the first project we're going to start looking at. So we're going to start looking at the internal review. I think we need to focus more so in just my opinion what we see. Yeah, people complain about the physical bills themselves. Mm -hmm. Usually we can look at the history and find out exactly why it is. If they want to believe us or not, that's up to them. Um, like for you in your case, you probably didn't hit your minimum billing, so you got your next time when you hit the billing, so that's probably why your bill doubled. And, and I, we view it, we, it's stats, everything is stats. Everything is stats. So when we bill out 2,100 plus accounts and such a small percentage have billing issues, we got to figure out, is it really the billing or is it just someone not keeping up on not paying the bills on time? Mm -hmm. Where we need to focus on is undue hardships. Um, for example, we had a gentleman who was out of town, pipe bust, no way to know, natural thing. Um, that's something that maybe some council should look at. I'm not talking like someone fills up a swimming pool and it their kid cuts the thing and they bust. You know, we, we always ask for proof, you know, and that's the hard part of trying to figure out what's natural, what's not natural. You know, you have a water bust in your house, we ask for pictures or we credit your sewer. So it's going to take a lot of research because we don't even know if it's legal to actually credit that much water because the state of Ohio looks at these as enterprise funds. So there's going to be a research we need to do on our end. But I think there is an opportunity for council to look at the policies. And I tell people, we, we, we are the middleman, and that's exactly what we are. We come to council, council set the policy, we issue, we do, we do our job based off the policy that council sets. And we just redid these not too long ago. Some of the things I'm gonna look at is the increments, the $100 increment paying online. You know, um, we're kinda gotta look at the data a little differently. Right now we look at all the accounts as a whole and the average under $100. So let's look at this from a different viewpoint now. Okay, so, it only impacts the people who pay on Invoice Cloud, not everyone in the city. So look at, let's look at the Invoice Cloud data. What's the average of those bills? If it's more than $100, then we're not satisfying those customers because we're actually making it hard for them to pay. Invoice Cloud is an option. It is nothing more, nothing less. It's an option. You do not have to use it. So example, to reiterate, if the average bill on Invoice Cloud is 125 because that's the group of people who use it, then we're actually selling them short by making them do two payments on 100 so we're looking at the data. How can we further split down the data? The drop-off payment, the deadline on that, we're looking to alleviate that. So there are ways that we're looking to make it easier on the other end, but I just want to take the opportunity to again reiterate, it's not so much, I don't want to focus on the billing procedures as far as people getting messed up bills. And I know we have some examples of it, but for the most part, we don't have, we don't feel though it's, a, it's an issue spread wide. Not saying we can't look at it, but I want council to kind of focus on more of the operational side of things. So good, perfect timing. There's no way we can accomplish that in one meeting. That's why I kind of took some time to explain it because it's going to take a lot of back and forth. It's going to take us leaving that meeting and doing our research to find out one, can we do it? What's the best practices? What is what other cities do? And 
that's what you look at, what's the best practices. So it'll take some time, but you at least got to start in some way, shape, or form. Well, do we bill by a thousand gallons or mm -hmm. ten? Is it the thousand? It's per thousand gallons. So, like my house, so we, I used a thousand. My bill was this, and my neighbor used two thousand. Shouldn't her bill be twice what my bill is? Yeah, exactly how it works. But it's not how it's coming out because I've been checking with my neighbors. Well, do you know if she's paid her bill late in the past? Yeah, she, she. It was not late. What do you mean late in the past? Well, because she has a bill late in the past, and no, some, this some, like, some balance yeah. might carry over. But you need to look at the gallons used because let's just right. say that you don't use a thousand. Yeah. You're going to get a five dollar bill. So if you're under that thousand, is that the minimum of five? I was going to. Yes. Yeah, so that's the minimum. Okay. So if you use eight hundred fifty gallons, you're getting a five dollar bill. Mm -hmm. So your next month, you'll use eight fifty again. You just hit that thousand, just over that thousand threshold. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the prices for a thousand gallons. I don't have top of my head. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting that two. You're not getting the two thousand because you haven't hit yet. And so this, I think that's where the discretionary is coming in. And that's my point. That's where I think is causing a whole lot of the issues. Because my bill is 20, 20, 20, and then it's 35, and it's like, wait, what the heck happened? I don't have a leak. There's nothing wrong. But it's that my numbers have caught up, and I understand that. But I wonder in this day and age why we can't bill per hundred, possibly. And I know, hmm. I know, it could be set up, but if I use 800, let's times it by whatever the, how much is it, 14, I don't know. How much is it for 1,000? Twelve dollars. I don't know. Eighteen something. That's water. So it's eighteen dollars. I don't think it's that high though. It's thirteen twenty-seven. Something like that. I don't know the exact number off my head, but it's so not. it's a dollar thirty-seven a gallon. Basically, is what you're saying. Or no, I'm sorry, my math is bad tonight. But you, you know what I'm saying. If that's for a thousand, then you go your points over, and there you go. At that point, time goes this bill actual. But most utility companies don't do that. All utility companies bill on on estimates. And then mm -hmm. you get an actual reading, whether it be your gas, whether it be utility, your your electric. I think our if people bill. are oh. are no, it's per kilowatt hour. Um, I don't know how I don't pay my electric bill. Someone else does, so I guess I can't say that. Um, I honestly don't think that's the issue. I think if people actually understood it, it's not complicated. Well, I think because people don't understand, that's making it complicated. That's what I think. But. I think as much time as we explain it, it's on Facebook. Uh, people should understand if you you only if you're not hitting that thousand gallon increment, you're not getting billed for that thousand dollars. Right. So if you get you use two thousand six hundred and eighty, mm -hmm. you're getting billed for two thousand gallons. Right. Not three. But so then, next month you're going to get the three. The next month you get billed for that 600 plus whatever you use. Only if you go up to the next level. Let's just say you get you get billed, you use 26 gallon, 2,600 gallons that month. Mm -hmm. All right, you get billed for 2,000. Let's just say you're gone for most of the month and you only use 20, you only use 200 gallons in the next billing cycle. You're only you're getting a bill for another 2,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. So then when you cross that threshold per 1,000, would you get that next full increment? Right. That, yeah. I think I do understand yeah. that process. I just, I would like to see it simpler somehow. So if we could go down to 500 gallons instead of 1,000. But you're not making any better. You're still you're billing. You're helping. No, I know you're not. You're, and all due respect, you're, you're still billing the same way. You're billing the same way. You're just doing that at a bigger interval. So it's, if you're confused at per 1,000 gallon, you're going to be confused at per 500 gallon. Well, so really, the only true. way to alleviate it is just to bill actual. Yeah, and so that's something we can look at. I was talking to Howie about that, so but what manpower that takes so we need to upgrade any equipment. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason why, and I, I'm not saying to be, I'm just being very honest, no, there's a ahead. reason why people don't do it like that. I just don't know what that reason is. Is that, is our software compatible to bill actual gallons? I'm going to talk to Howie about that. I'm sure it is. I'm sure we can I set it up think. to whatever we want. To me, that would be the, the answer. Really? I don't think it's going to help. I think it's still going to confuse people. I because here, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, but <laughs> if I'm using 1,900 gallons, Mr. Cook, it is the same people every well, and that month. Could be. So you got to look at the stats when it comes. It's not like it's a new person coming in all the time saying, "I don't get it." We can literally have. We can tell you who's. We can tell you before the bill hits who's going to have problems. 
Well, I think so that's I think probably that true needs, for yes. the big mouth people. Yes, yeah, so and then you got people on Facebook who go and they go and they sit to say, right. well, this is not right, this is not right, this is what I'm build. Mm -hmm. And they're not even on New Carlisle Water, they're in Park Lane, so they're in Clark County. They're in Clark right. County. So that's when we look at the raw data. That's when we look at, all right, we built X amount of counts, so we don't have that much feedback. But however, the data shows it's usually the same group. I'm not saying it's the same person every single month, but it's generally, we can tell who's gonna have the issues. So I think what we do is we come together, we print out all the codes saying, this is the issue. What can we do to alleviate it? Um, we thought we improved it last time, but I think there's still just a little bit more room. Billing is always gonna be the million dollar question. How do you do it? Right, I you agree. Know? But I, I would really, if you could talk to Howie about doing it per what you actually use, I think that would be excellent. It makes it, I think, simpler for people because I'm pretty sure Ron and I will use pretty much the same every month until the summer hits and then we're going to kill it, which is what we usually do. So I think other people could see that too. And I just, I want to make it simpler. And, and I'm not saying, I know you have certain people that are complaining or, or are more vocal than others, but I know a lot of people, and I've talked to a lot of people who aren't vocal and they just sit and fume and I don't blame them because why is my bill now $43? It's been 32 for six months. I get you. Do they flip it over? They do. They, they get it. It does not look, and I've looked at the water bills from some other people. So yeah, I just want to try to alleviate that stress. The water bill comes every month. I just wish people would be like, oh God, what's it going to be? You know, then I think a lot of people feel that way. So not just the ones that are yeah. being loud. I think another alternative too is because I think, like I said, the industry standard is the um, estimated in actuals, mm -hmm. is look at level billing. Like they do for like gas and electric, like we'll look at your past history for like a year, you're gonna pay us this much every and month and then we're, we're gonna level up at the end of the sure. year. Yeah. You know, something like that. Is that- That, that might be- But that's how we come together and we think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's one something else we could sure. talk about to try and make it better, yes. Yep, yep, I agree. So does that explain the fluctuation of every monthly bill say one month mine was 60 the next month it's 97. yeah it's based off of your thousand gallon increments you only get billed per thousand gallon increments. so i blame my wife then for using all that water okay yeah that's how you got do it. it that's how you do it do we have an executive session <laughs> we do <laughs> we do we do okay so as far as the water stuff like i said i plan to bring something to council when we got the finance department's crawling out from the end of the year. So, so six months ish. Oh, well before that. Well before that. Oh, we'll good. start that well before that. Okay, good. Yeah. Yep. Perfect timing. You could be right or you can Anything right. else to be brought before council before we break for executive? Mm -mm. Go ahead, you know. Mm-hmm. Why am I running your meeting? That's your I good. shook my head, yes. Man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're acting now. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I noticed on the website, it still didn't have anything on there about the planning meeting, which I guess, did they cancel it or is it still on the 12th? I'll have to see where they're at with it, as far as Well, at that posted. meeting, he said it was 12th, and you said, well, we always put it on when they have it. He said, well, you, will you please put it I, on? When I said I have to see where, where it is on the website, but you're talking about and the February 12th it. meeting. The February 12th meeting was mm -hmm. never a meeting. That's what we discussed with you last time. You had brought it up last time. They were never to meet on February 12th. Bitch. What is today? The 5th. The 5th. Well, the 12th hasn't got here yet. And I'm, they you don't said have, you were going to put it on. They don't have they a meeting on the 12th. Janelle, they don't have a meeting on the 12th. There's nothing to put on the website. The planning board's not. If you not go back and look, he stood up and told me. He said, Janelle, it's on February 12th. Mr. Fields told you that. Yes, correct. Mr. Fields and said was, that. And he, and he was said, wrong. would you please put it on? And I'm telling you, he misspoke. There is no meeting on the 12th. Mr. Fields told you incorrect information, is what I'm getting at you. There is no meeting on the okay, 12th. Okay, so there is no meeting. That's and, yes. And that's why it's not on. Yes, exactly. Okay, yeah. then I understand. <laughs> But I have never seen it on there. So, but if they have one, it will be on there. Because they never had a meeting in the twelfth to begin with. He just... No, I mean I have never seen it on there when they are going to. Oh, they've been on it before. Okay. Well, I just haven't looked at the right time, I guess. Or maybe I keep just checking maybe you missed it's not it. On there. Gotcha. So they, they don't meet. They don't. They, 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 they don't meet every month. They don't meet on a set time. Like, oh, I know. Yeah. So when it's they have a meeting, it's usually up. 
Okay, so mm -hmm. he just thought there was going to be one. I yes, he misspoke. Okay. Well, that solves that problem. Thank you. No problem. <clears throat> going to executive session. Yeah. Anybody got anything else before we go to the executive session? All right, we'll take a five minute break for an executive session to discuss the uh, compensation of public employees. Need a Wait, we got to we I got we got to vote to go into executive session. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. She was the first, right? Who's the second? Second. All right, Councilman Chami. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Passes five zero. Regular session. So moved. Second. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Chami. Yes. That passes five zero. Right, we're back in regular session. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? Motion. So moved. <laughs> so second. Was it? Whatever. <laughs> All right. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Chief? Yes. We are adjourned. Seven.